Hello, welcome to the next episode in the Mono Game tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering scene management. We're going to look at two approaches. One of them is very, very simple and good for small scale applications. And the other one is more robust, but harder to implement. Let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is the simple version. And this is going to be solved through the use of switch cases. And so the first thing we want to do is def define our scenes. And I'm going to be doing this by making an enum. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because enums are very readable and easy to use. And so if you've never worked with one before, you just create an enum like this, and then just define some names. It's a convention to make them capital like this. Um, so I'm going to do start and game here. And if you hover over them, you'll see that they actually have numerical constant values to them. So we have a zero, and we have a one, and it's relative to their position inside of the enum. And we can use this um, inside of a switch case, which is just a very fast jump table, to get really, really effective uh, scene management. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way we're going to do that is first we have to actually track our active scene. And so I'm going to create a member variable, and I'm going to call this, or of type scenes, and I'm going to call this my active scene. And then inside of the constructor, I'm going to say my active scene is equal to scenes.start. Now what we're going to do is inside of the update met uh, methods here, we're going to implement our switch cases. And so switch case is, is just, um, we switch based on the value of whatever we put inside of the parentheses. So switch based on our active scene, and then we create our cases. So first, what if our active scene is equal to the start scene? Then we're going to execute all the code between the start here and this break statement. So this is where the start scene is. And then we have a case of scenes.game, and this is where our game scene is at our break statement and it is important to add these break statements otherwise if this wasn't here it would execute both of these it's a weird little quirk with switch cases but they are significantly faster than having if else statements for every scene so we've done this in our update let's go ahead and do it inside of our draw I'm gonna do them between the sprite batch begin and ends here paste that in there and there you go scene management done let's go ahead and show that it's working by loading in a texture and drawing it so I'm going to load in a texture here. I'm going to create a private member variable, private texture 2D texture in the load content. As before, texture equals content.load of type texture 2D, and mine's just called Atlas. And inside of the game scene, I want to draw this, but not the start scene. So in the game scene, I'm just going to say sprite batch. It is an underscore sprite batch dot draw our texture and then a new rectangle of like 10 10 400 400 and then I think I can do the source here right the source rectangle I'm gonna do 0 0 16 16 we should get a nice grass block that way okay and there we go so now what's gonna happen is that once we're in our game scene we're going to be drawing this texture but when we're in our start scene we haven't added any drawing logic so nothing will happen of course, since we're starting out inside of our start scene, we're not going to be able to get to this game scene. So what we can do is we can add some update logic to our start scene here by going inside of this switch case between this case and this break and saying if uh, keyboard.getState.isKeyDown, and I'm going to do sp the space key, then I'm just going to say active scene equals scenes.game. Cool, that's our entire system. If we press run, and there we go, we're in our start game, so we can't see anything, but we press space, there we go, we have a nice grass block on the screen. All right, we want to observe the downsides of this. So this works really well because we only have two scenes. But let's say we have like some sort of like RPG Zelda style game with a ton of different rooms and areas. Are we gonna be wanting to add all these enums for every single scene and then going to our switch case and adding every single different case and then just having this all in one big switch case line here? Probably not it's not a super scalable approach. And so we're going to solve this with our second approach. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to explain our approach and then we're going to actually write it in code because it's a bit better to actually explain before we go into things straight away. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're going to have a scene interface. Think about a car. The, car, the buttons on the car t um, tell you what they can do. Like you can start the car, you can turn on the AC, you can switch gears and stuff. But do you actually know the inner workings? Unless you're like the person that made the car, you're a mechanic or something, you probably don't. You just know that you can push this and it will happen. We're going to create an interface for a scene. And this interface is going to say, hey, every scene that we have is going to be able to update itself and it's going to be able to draw itself. And we're also gonna have an, um, a load section for loading in our content. 
we don't we know nothing else about the scene other than we have those three options for us we're going to then create a scene management system that is going to store these scenes that have different logic but the same uh, buttons you know going back to that example we have, they have the same buttons that we we're able to press and then we basically just grab the active scene and act on that one this way we can have a infinitely in quotes expandable uh, scene management system that is very very flexible so first thing we want to do is implement that interface and I'm just gonna call this scene.cs make sure make sure we're in the correct namespace and then I'm gonna create a public class of I scene actually I'm gonna make a public interface of I scene and this the I means interface it's a convention to basically say this is an interface Interfaces are a bit different from classes. If you've never worked with interfaces before, you don't actually just define a constructor. You don't actually define, um, or actually define what fun methods do. You only just define what methods that need to be there. And so for us, it's going to be three. The first one is going to be a load method that I'm going to use for loading content. The second one is going to be an update method that I'm going to use for updating the, the scene. And then the third one is going to be a draw method for drawing the scene. And I'm adding in some... Um, arguments here that you can see could be pretty useful inside of these so the game time for delta time and then the sprite patch for actually drawing and this is our entire interface we're done very very lean now let's go ahead and add a management system to manage these so I'm just going to create a scene manager.cs again make sure that we're inside of the correct namespace and then I'm going to create a public class scene manager this scene manager is going to actually have to have some sort of data structure to hold them, and I have decided to use the stack data structure. If you don't know what a stack is, a stack is a last in first out data structure. Think about a stack of pancakes. You put a pancake on top, which pancakes do you eat first? You Well, you take the one off the top. You don't pull the one off the bottom. That's just going to create a big mess. You put one on top, you take one off top. That's how it works. The same thing with a stack. We're going to be adding scenes to the stack. We're going to look at the top one. That's going to be our active scene. When we don't want it anymore, we pop it off the stack. We look at the next one down. We want to add another one. We put one on top. That's the new active one. Very, very convenient for game development. The syntax is we create a private member variable called stack. Inside the angle brackets, we specify the type that we're storing inside of our stack. It's going to be our interface I scene. And I'm just going to call this my scene stack. Next, we're going to create a constructor because this is an actual class here. And inside of this, um, this is not the right one. Sorry. We're going to use generic here. Sorry. Okay. We create a stack here. In the constructor, we're going to initialize it to a new instance of a stack with the shortcut syntax here. And then we're going to add some convenience methods to actually be able to use it. Um, so the first one is going to be adding a scene. So public void add scene. And this is just going to be of type scene, I scene scene. And then in here, all we're going to do is just do a scene stack dot push, which will just put it onto the top of the stack, and we're going to push our scene onto the stack. Next, we want to do a public void remove scene, and we don't need to pass any arguments because we can only remove from the top. And we'll just go ahead and say scene stack dot pop, and it will pop the current scene. And then the last one is going to be a public i scene um, get current scene, and it's just going to return scene stack dot peak, which will look at the top of our stack. If you don't want to use a stack, this also works with like any other data structure. I just think it's the most convenient in my opinion. You could use a list, you could use like a map or anything, whatever you want to do. I think this is just an easy way to do it. Okay, now that we have this, we can add read only to make C sharp happy, C sharp happy, and now we can implement a simple uh, we can implement the C manager system inside of our game.cs. So, I'm going to create a new member variable of type scene manager name is scene manager very original and inside of the constructor for good practice scene manager equals new so we're creating a new instance of our scene manager class how are we going to use it well let's go to our update here normally where we add our update logic for our game we're going to instead do scene manager dot get current scene and then you'll see this returns a type of i scene and remember we can push the buttons on it we don't know what they do but we can push the buttons so we can just say dot update pass in that game time there you go Scene manager here between the sprite patch here. We'll just do scene manager dot get current scene, and then say dot draw. Pass in the sprite patch here. Very cool stuff. That is the whole thing. This isn't going to work because we don't have any scenes to work with here. We we just we have an empty scene manager, so it's going to break. 
let's go ahead and make some sort of scene to work with. I'm going to create a game scene dot C sharp. Make sure we're inside of the namespace. And let's go ahead and actually implement that interface. So public public class game scene is going to implement our I scene. And you're going to see some a cool thing here. It's going to tell us what we need to do. So we're going to hover over this and it's going to say game scene does not implement these members. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to implement our um, I'm going to implement our constructor here, and I'm going to um, then implement our the things that we need to do. So our load method here, and then our update method, taking the game time, and then the draw method. And there we go, now it work. So now what we can do is we can go to our game1.cs and we can plug that in. So in the load content here, I'm just gonna say scene manager .add scene, and I'm gonna add a new instance of our game scene. And now this would work, but we're not doing anything in here. So how are we gonna know it's gonna work? Let's go ahead and draw a texture in here. But in order to load in textures, we need access to our content manager. I'm going to, inside of my game scene, I'm going to pass our content manager here as just content manager and then I'm going to create an associative member variable inside of our game scene call or of type content manager just call it content manager and then I'm going to say this dot content manager equals content manager cool and this is just content manager there we go okay now inside of our load I'm going to load in a texture so I'm going to say um, content manager dot load angle brackets are of type texture 2D. Same deal as before, loading that act list. And of course, we now need to store this inside of a texture 2D um, object so that we can use it inside of our draw. So I'll say now our texture equals content manager dot load. So now you can see that stuff that we were doing before in our game 1.cs, we can now do it inside of these smaller scoped scene classes. So we can load in the textures that we need for our scene currently. So now we can go ahead and go into our draw here and just do the same thing before. So sprite batch dot draw our texture. And I'm going to just say a new rectangle of 10, 10, 400, 400, and then a source rectangle of 0, 0, 16, 16, and then a color dot white. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. So there we go, that's gonna work fine now, but of course now we have this error here. There is no argument given that corresponds with the required parameter content manager. What we fix that is we just pass in that content that we were using before. So now we're passing this in, we now have access to it here, we use it to load in a texture, and then we draw this texture whenever the game scene is active. So now let's actually see this in action by um, drawing our game scene. Press run. Oh, and I forgot something. Um, whenever we load in our scenes, when we add a scene, we probably want to load it. So in here, we're going to want to do scene dot load. That way that we, that way we actually call this load method here. I completely forgot to actually load in my texture. So this actually never got called, but now whenever we add a scene, we're automatically loading it in. So that will be solved. Now we can go back to our scene and try again. There we go. We are now seeing our game scene, but let's go ahead and prove it. I'm gonna make another scene, and I'm just gonna call this my exit scene. And exit scene's just gonna be blank. So I'm gonna say namespace, yt game, public class, exit scene. It's going to um, implement our i scene here. And again, we're going to just have our updates and draws. So I'm just going to rip it from here. There we go. Remove all of the logic. And there we go, now we have another scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this in. Whenever we press the spacebar, we wanna add in this exit scene. So we don't wanna add it in automatically here, we wanna add it in when we press the spacebar. Now we could just do this inside of the update method here, inside of the game1.cs. But think about how games work. Like, maybe you're moving your player inside of a dungeon, and it hits, they hit a door, and now you want to change the scene. Do you wanna do that inside of your game1.cs here? You wanna have some sort of way to map the logic from your scene back to the original game and then do that switch, it's a little weird. Instead, it's a little easier to be able to actually access the scene manager system from within the scenes themselves. Now I have to preface this, preface this by saying that some 
Stack Overflow people will say that this is bad because there is an idea of type coupling here, which is where the scene and the scene manager are a little too reliant on each other. Um, but this is one of those exceptions where actually using a technical bad practice provides huge benefit. And since we are not directly accessing the scene manager system in our interface, there's technically not a direct reliance on the scene manager system. It's an optional thing for your scene. So it's a technicality, but it is a very, very useful thing that a lot of people do. So what we're going to do is, in order to access our scene manager, we're going to provide another constructor argument of scene manager, call it scene manager here. And then again, I'm going to make an associative um, member variable, scene manager, scene manager. And then we can just do this dot scene manager equals our scene manager here. And now what we can do is inside of the update method that is currently empty, we can say if keyboard dot get state dot is key down, and I'm going to say keys dot space, then we'll just say scene manager dot add scene. And now we want to add that exit scene. So new exit scene. Cool. Now the exit scene takes in an argument. It takes in the content manager. So we'll just pass in our own content manager. Cool. Perfect. Perfectly fine. Now this will work 100%. Of course, now in the game.cs, we have another error. Um, there is no argument given that corresponds to the required parameter scene manager. So comma scene manager, we've just added in there. Now what we'll see is that the exit scene is completely empty. So whenever we press space, we should see that we go from seeing a grass block to seeing nothing. So grass block, press space. Now we're inside of our exit scene. Beautiful. Okay, so that was quite a lot of information in a short amount of time. So here's a bit of a recap. We define an interface for our scenes. This basically says what we can do with our scenes. Then we have a scene manager system that manages these interfaces in a stack. You can add scenes, you can remove scenes, and you can get the current scenes. This allows for a large a storage of a large amount of scenes. What we then do is we add some initial scenes inside of our load content here. And then inside of the update and draw, we get the current scene and we call its update method. We then jump over to those scenes update and uh, update and draw methods here. And we perform whatever logic or drawing they have. So in this case, we're drawing a texture whenever we are inside of our whenever we are using our game scene as the active scene. And we are also updating or checking for a space press input inside of this scene. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole logic behind it. So hopefully that made some sense. Um, if it didn't, I have a discord that I've used that has a lot of fellow game developers in there that can help out and I can help out as well. If you have any questions, make sure to join that discord and ask them there and I'll be happy to help. And also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like these. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.